So first, I guess I just want to ask if you could tell me a little bit about yourself, your name, your age, where you went to school, like what you're doing right now. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm Graham Farrell is my name. I'm 24. Um, I spent two years at UCLA before dropping out for Duffel. So I uh, helped found Duffel, um, let's see, beginning of my sophomore year. So that was 2019. Um, and uh all my grades went down to zero and uh because i was just working all day every day so um, me and my buddies we dropped out of school for it um currently and then i left the company um 2021 um and right now i am an illustrator i work in crypto so i'm an artist uh kind of like managing creative uh projects for a company working in crypto right now so that's what I do. Um, but yeah, I had the pleasure of working with Duffel for quite a while and it kind of defined um, like those college years for me and really loved it, so. Yeah, that's awesome. And I heard you're super successful in your new career. So congratulations on that. Well, thank you. I don't know how, <laughs> I, yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I know you kind of briefly touched on it, but what is the story behind Duffel? Like what were your sources of inspiration? Yeah. Yeah, so um, it's a cool story. So um, my buddy and I, we started a, um, so I went to school for um, theater, for acting. And uh, my buddy who I met, met first week of school, I actually still work with him here at the company that I'm working at now. He was a film major and we were really interested in, um, in making commercials uh, specifically for startups because at UCLA, there's something called Startup UCLA, which is basically this massive, uh, I don't even want to say club. It was like it was like funded by the school, and so it really incentivized people to start companies at an early age in college. And we saw this as like a good way to make money for ourselves because like they needed commercials, they needed stuff for Instagram, and like we were really good at filming stuff. And so we just started filming um, commercials for these companies. We even filmed some for Bird and for Guayaquil when they were really early, and um, which was like kind of like a fun uh, gig there. But um, we met this guy named David, who is currently the CEO and still there at Duffel. His name's um, David Lin. And he he had a company called Powered. And essentially what it was, was what Duffel is now, but to a very, very uh, limited ex extent. Literally all he did is he sold jewel pods. Um, <laughs> and uh, he delivered and sold jewel pods. He didn't sell anything other than jewel pods. And it was all illegal. It was all like buying the set that... He was literally buying them from the vape shop and marking them up like 10 bucks because frat guys wanted jewel pods like in 10 minutes. And he would <laughs> deliver, yeah. And so he would deliver them on his skateboard, on his electric skateboard. And so Rohan and I worked, um, he wanted us to film a commercial. And dude, we just like gelled right off the bat. And we were super into the idea. Um, Bird, I don't know if you know this, but Bird um, was used UCLA as their flagship. Uh, location across the world so their oh. very first time that bird ever released scooters was at ucla and i remember it was a big deal it was my freshman year and like it was like they literally just appeared out of nowhere and like everyone is just using bird and it was like really crazy and so um we started talking to david and we realized like this could be a really cool idea and um we started learning how to like hack the birds and so we would we would literally get them and it's cool that i can talk about this now because we're we we talked about it with the the, the vp at bird about this but we would steal the birds the scooters and <laughs> we, would, uh, we would order these chips from china and we would just take out like the the main like compartment inside and replace the chips and then we owned them so for the first year we didn't buy any scooters we just literally we stole them from Bird, which was really <laughs> scrappy. But uh, we tell this, we told the story a lot, and people thought it was so funny. Um, and then, so yeah, so the inspiration was was really just that, like, uh, DoorDash was so slow. It was like 30, 35 minutes and it's not worth it when you're just wanting a bag of chips or you're wanting something, you know, it's just like, I'm not going to wait 30 minutes. I'll just go to the store and we guaranteed an under 10 minute delivery, um, guaranteed it. And I think the time that I worked there, um, even after thousands of deliveries, probably only a handful of times were they over 10 minutes. Like we were really big about that. And um, it, we just knew that's what college kids one wanted and it. Uh, I mean, product market fit was there in the sense that um, the like, yeah, right off the bat, it was just super successful and it was super scrappy. Um, and then, yeah, took it from there. So that's kind of like how it started um, at a very kind of like long story long right there. <laughs> that's no, that's awesome. And to the scooter thing, 
That is funny. You guys are just falling <laughs> on a budget. You're both yeah. college students. What could you do? What are we going to do? <laughs> <laughs> what are we going to do? Yeah. <laughs> so talking about that, how is your experience creating a company run by college students? It was so much fun. It was so okay. much fun. Yeah, it was so much fun. We hired only college students. Um, and that was, it was actually so easy hiring because everyone wanted to work. And it was like, I think the fact that we delivered everything on scooters and I'm not too sure what Duffel does now. I'm I'm pretty sure they're still doing electric deliveries with scooters mm -hmm. as their main form of transportation. Um, but it's something that everyone wants to do. Like driving scooters is fun. Oh, I get paid to do it. And like, it's really cool. And so it was also fun because I think if we were if we were to hire like adults, they wouldn't get into it. Like they would like these college kids, we hired mainly people from fraternities and sororities just because they had a lot of connections and we were friends with them. And um, there would be like competitions, like who's gonna deliver the fastest, you know, uh, who's like, who's uh, gonna deliver the most in one trip, you know? And so you'd have to like, you'd, we had these orange backpacks and people would like put like 10 orders in there and like they'd be driving all around. And so it was like, it kind of turned into this fun competition that I think you, you wouldn't really get with people who weren't college students. Like it became fun for people. And so it was a total blast. Like I became really close friends with a lot of the people we hired and we just would hang out in our uh, apartment because we didn't have a centralized store. We stored everything in our apartment um, and people would just hang out. And when an order, order came in, they would deliver it. And it was just like kind of just fun hanging out with your friends. And so, yeah, the college, like hiring the college students was like super, it was like honestly the best part of the whole process. Yeah, I definitely still see that mindset upheld here. Like all of my friends who work for Snag and Duffel, they, it is a competition. They're all just having so much fun with it, like scootering ever, trying to hit yeah. those times. Yeah. It, it's just a really fun work environment from what I've heard. Totally. Yeah. And it's so, like, who would drive a scooter for free? You know, get yeah, paid. For, yeah, you get paid for it and you get to learn all about Isla Vista, where we live. Yeah. It's super cool. Yeah. Okay. And then you kind of touched on this, but because Duffel was created with the students' needs in mind, how do you think the company would have been different if it was created by more profit-seeking corporate individuals? Yeah. I know you said that because it's run, like the students are the employers, but what if it wasn't created by someone like you? Yeah, I think that the, um, I just think the charm, I think there's like a certain charm with Duffel that really kind of encapsulated people. And I think it's because we were college kids, like the founders and we were very public. We would, we made tons of videos, like every time early, when we were early marketing, all the videos was of us. I was acting in the commercials and so was Rohan and David and all. And it's like, it was kind of fun and kind of cringy, but people kind of got behind it. And so it just felt super organic just because it wasn't these big people coming in trying to like, oh, let's monopolize the college delivery system. And I think like GoPuff is doing that and like, I respect that. But I think that even now, although GoPuff is massive and you can't deny the, like, the success there, there is a certain um, person of like, there's a certain like connection with Duffel just because it's like kids helping kids, like, you know, college kids helping college kids. And it began that way. So I think, uh, I think that was a really strong aspect of why we kind of blew up so fast and so early was because people could relate to us and we were funny and we were kind of cool. And like, you know, we were the, we were the guys with the orange backpacks on the orange scooters. And like, you know, it's like, oh, those are the Duffel kids, you know? So, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Okay, and then my next question is a little bit loaded, so answer it at your will. But what makes Duffel unique from its competitors, specifically Snag? So I, okay, so I don't know too much about Snag. David's mentioned it a little bit, but could you actually get me up to speed on like what specifically, like what do you think about it? Because I have a basic understanding, but what yes. exactly is it? So it's essentially the exact same thing as Duffel. It's a scooter delivery service, and yeah. they're the only two right now in Isla Vista. Gotcha. But Snag, where it's different, is that it serves, or not serves, it delivers alcohol. Right. Like that's their leading, like, win they have with these college students. Yeah. So, like, that's but everything thought. else is practically the exact same. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I know from um, experience that we tried to go down the alcohol route. And it was just tough because a couple of different reasons. First of all, it's mad expensive to just get a license, but also there was just a certain level of like culpability that I don't think we wanted to be a part of, you know? Um, there was, you know, it's just like, I, I live, we like, I didn't live, I was, I was not a part of a frat, but we kind of like lived on frat row. And it's just like every Thursday, every Friday, every Saturday, ambulances are like going up and down. It's like some freshman just got alcohol poisoning. And, you know, it's like, damn, that sucks. And it's like, 
that's not something like we talked about it a lot and it's just like we didn't really want to um like fuel that um and i think like also economically it kind of it just like didn't make a lot of sense and so it's like let's just not like fight this battle because if kids want alcohol like they're gonna get it any way that they want and um and i don't think that we need to be a part of that and i think like there's like a lot of different ways that we um i think like we made money uh well in other ways like focusing like we focused a lot on nicotine which i mean say what you will like that's a terrible addiction as well but like to us it was like we'll focus more on that and like we'll just leave alcohol and so i think there was a certain level of culpability that we didn't really want to touch you know and be a part of yeah th that's what i assumed was the answer to that because yeah so thank you <laughs> yeah yeah then, it's just, this is tricky it's tricky yeah it's difficult yeah and yeah. they're having some issues with like you know fakes and whatnot so oh, of course yeah and that that's, yeah it was like you like then you get the law involved and like you know that's a whole thing like yeah so it's it's tricky yeah <laughs> that is a tricky issue and then why would you encourage students to work for duffel yeah i think that the um like kind of what i mentioned before is just it's it's like it's a company that's like run by college students like david the ceo of the company is my age he's 24 he might even be a little bit younger um and it was like that's kind of just like the ethos of the of the company is just to like be fun and like that's why orange is our color is like orange is a fun color and it's like you know like this is like the, the design of like the logo like it's just meant to be kind of fun and like welcoming and um i think that like i would encourage people to work there just because like why not it's like a lot more fun than working at like the local ralphs or like working at like the local vape shop or whatever like you get to hang out with friends you get to ride scooters and like i don't know sounds sick you know <laughs> oh it does and i 100 percent agree and honestly it's such a popular job to have here with Is students it really? like yeah it's difficult to get a job there because of how many people apply <laughs> no way that's so that's so cool that makes me happy yeah yeah no it, it's 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 blowing up like you did it. <laughs> Let's go. And then, <laughs> and then going off that success story, where do you see the company in five years? Like I know it keeps expanding across campuses and whatnot, but how do you yeah. think it's gonna go? Yeah, I think like we talked about this a lot and um, was it was tough for us. Um, when we went to Y Combinator, which was like the accelerator up in the Bay Area. I think like figuring out growth was tough because obviously you want to like the GoPuff route, like what GoPuff did was very similar in the sense that like they started at, I believe they started, oh, some school on the East Coast. I don't remember which one, but they very, very quickly kind of just expanded to like cities and um, kind of just became like the DoorDash of convenience. And I think that, I don't know what the company has in mind, but I see Duffel being the de facto college delivery service where like, this was the issue that we always had is like, we tried expanding the neighborhoods and we would try it and it just like never really worked. And I think it's just because of the the fact of like kind of what we've been talking about. It's like, it's a college started company, college run company. And like, that's what makes it fun and that's what makes it special. And I think that like, if GoPuff were to come into Isla Vista, people would use it. But I wonder if people would be as like diehard fans of the brand or of the company as they would for Duffel, you know? And so five years from now, I see Duffel becoming like kind of that de facto college delivery service. I don't necessarily seeing it become like becoming the delivery service of America. You know, I see it being more of a college centered like company and brand, you know? Yeah. And and with GoPuff, it kind of is an Isla Vista, but you're spot on with saying that no one is really using it and they're having to put out a lot of promotions yeah. because like Duffles was reigning superior. So yeah, let's go. They're trying and they're failing. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. And okay, I have one last question for you. Yeah. Given your expertise and being a, a working student, I know you did drop out to pursue your company, but before that, <laughs> what advice do you have for students about balancing school and work? Yeah, I think that the, um, I think that my biggest, uh, let's see here. I mean, okay, this question might be pointed towards the wrong person here <laughs> because I have like a pretty strong opinion on like, like where you should be focusing your time as a college kid but um like my biggest successes in life have come from the people that i've met around me and like the friends that i've made and i think that balancing um it's less about activities like less about being involved with something just for the sake of doing it and more being involved with people that you really love and people that you really like and being with and it's like i came into college like thinking i wanted to be an actor and like 
living in LA and I left two years later wanting to start businesses and wanting to like help people and wanting to be creative with my like entrepreneurial spirit. And so I think and like the way I got there was by the people that I met and focusing more on my relationships and focusing less about like what I thought I wanted to do or like this preconceived idea of like who I thought I was. So I think like that's the biggest advice is just to like, like just like be with your friends and like, like figure stuff out that's like cool and fun for you and less about like what you think you have to do or like have to be, you know? Yeah, awesome. Thank you. That was the best response I've heard because I've been asking all the students I'm interviewing, how do you balance school and work? But you just hit the nail on the head. So thank Go. you. <laughs> yeah. And that's all I have. So I really appreciate your time with me today. Of course.